Associate. And our dear brother Sid has joined us in prayer. And he's been groomed today. And he looks a million dollars. So there, let us give him a treat. Now, so welcome dear friends to our Monday evening prayer of Holy Week. Or as we say here in England, Passion Week. And it's lovely to welcome you who volunteered to be God's prayer partners on earth. And if ever our world needs prayer, it's right now, especially for Gaza, for the cessation of violence to those poor innocent women who've given birth with no milk to feed their newborn children. And for the many young children that have been murdered Oh, breaks my heart. But it's lovely to welcome you. So this evening I dedicate this light. It's a symbol of my faith, the Christ light, and I share it with you. I share it with you, dear Sister Iris, and remembering your family and your grandson, Jaden, our dear Sister Lynn and her family, and dear Sister Janine, Suzanne's daughter, looking very fresh on that photograph. And dear Sister Siobhan and Brother Ollie in Athlone. And to those who've joined me on YouTube, our dear, our dear Sister Fran and friends. And on Facebook, we've got Suzanne on Facebook and Janine on Whereby. Isn't that wonderful? So welcome. Let us focus on this flame, especially this week, where a young man gave his life for us, and his young mum, who stood beside her son, but her heart was pierced because of our sin. So we pray to the Mother of God to be our spiritual mother and to protect each one of us from those intent on doing us harm. And we pray for all our pets and I've now got Louis beside me and our dear brother Sid. So in the stillness of this moment, we give praise, we give love and we give gratitude to God for not giving up on us. We at times do give up on God when things don't go our way, when we face life challenges. Many walk away instead of staying still and listening to their heart, the gateway to their soul because your soul is the gateway to God. Late this morning, when we went to collect the two dogs from the groomers, I had a quiet time in the car waiting for Brother Rob. And it was lovely to get out, even though it was pouring down. And it kept coming to me that you're a spiritual troll for Jesus. And I went, what? I'm a spiritual troll. For Jesus, a praying partner for his Father in heaven. And I was guided to share that with you in an email and in an e-card. We are spiritual trolls as members of the JC and the Sunshine Band, followers of Christ. So let us begin our evening prayer. O God, come to my aid. O Lord, make haste and help me. Glory be to the Father, Mother, God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit has prepared all our videos this evening 
and for those on Facebook and YouTube, you're more than welcome to come and join us. And you don't have to open your camera, but you have the pleasure of seeing what the Spirit has chosen for us to allow us experience another side of God, the tenderness, the compassion, and the unrequiting love that he has for you. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit now to come upon each one of us and to open the door of our heart so that in this Holy Week we can discern what the Lord God is saying to us. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit of God. And now, allow me to play for you our next video. And the video chosen for us is Isaiah 61, the prayer song to set the captives free. So let me locate the video for you. And do tell Janine Suzanne, she's on my hit list for prayer. Excuse me.
praise you, Jesus. Oops. That was a powerful video of the local Israel Jewish people coming together, the families and the loved ones of the hostages, sung in the beautiful dialect of the Jewish tradition. So we join with them and pray that what the United Nations passed this afternoon, that they be released, whoever is still living, because it's almost six months. We pray for their release because they too are children of Abraham as you and I are. So let us now share with you a prayer that was chosen today by the Holy Spirit from Ray Simpson's book, The Complete Book of Celtic Prayer. And the prayer that I was led to share with you this evening we rise up clothed in the strength of Christ. We shall not be imprisoned. We shall not be harmed. We shall not be downtrodden. We shall not be left alone. We shall not be tainted. We shall not be overwhelmed. We go clothed in Christ's white garments. We go free to weave the Christ pattern. We go loved to serve Christ's weak ones in this holy week. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? So if you want to get a copy on Amazon, that's the book. It's got thousands of prayers for every situation. Well, let us now invite, invoke the messianic Jesus, the Christ, the physician of your soul and mine, who is with us because he's within us. But are you one of the scribes and Pharisees that is aware of Christ, but who chooses to give lip service because your heart remains closed? I pray not. I pray that the Spirit opened your heart when we played the tunes from the Tibetan bowl so that you can hear Jesus speak to you as he spoke to me in the car going to Aldi, that I'm a spiritual troll for Jesus. And I went, what? But I accept what he gives to me because I know it is divine truth. But are you afraid to hear the divine truth that your God has for you. Let me now play for you, Behold Our God. Behold Our God.
so we behold our God. And I share with you two psalms this evening for Vespers. The first psalm is Psalm 22. It's a modern version from the book Psalms Now. O oh God, why have you left me? Why are you so far from me? I can no longer feel you near. I reach desperately for you, but I cannot find you. I know you are holy and all righteous and everywhere present. The saints of past years believed in you and they trusted you. You responded to their cries. They sought you and they found you. And it's no wonder that your praises were constantly on their lips. But I feel an empty and insignificant as a bag full of wind. I don't really expect people's plaudits, but I sorely feel their criticisms. I risk all in following what I feel to be your will for me. Yet even my friends fail to support me and they actually turn against me. He thinks he's doing God's will, they say, but he'll be sorry he made this decision. I believe that you have been with me from the very beginning of my life. I know that you have cared for me through these many years, but God, I need you now. I am in trouble. I cannot find you or feel you near. At this moment, I feel as if I'm falling apart. Nothing seems to make sense anymore. Everything I attempt ends in failure. I feel inferior and weak. And those I have tried to serve are actually gloating over my flops and my failures. Yet you do love me and you accept me. You will save me even from myself. Thus I will continue to sing your praises in spite of or in scorn of my feelings. As despicable as I am and feel at times, you do not despise me, neither will you leave me. Your love is personal and it is eternal. Nor will you despise or ignore my afflictions that plague your many sons and daughters. Your children and servants are precious to you and even when they fail you, you never fail them. You hear their cries and feel their pain and are ever ready to support them in their conflicts. I dedicate myself and you to you, O Lord, and I will serve you whatever the cost or the consequence. You are my God, regardless of my feelings. I will praise your name and proclaim your love to people all around me. Oh, wow. That psalm is really moving my heart to shed many tears for the times when I allowed others almost take my life from me. But you know, the Lord has a plan for you too. He ain't finished with you yet because he loves you and he needs you as a prayer partner for his father. So let me come to the next. And this is called the goodness of God. So let me find the video for you. 
the goodness, here we are, the goodness of God. <laughs> Thank you so much, that seriously, is so awesome. for being here, for worshiping with us, for leading us in worship, and uh, even for your ministry. And Lord, I just lift up my brother and my sister. I thank you so much for them. Would you use them, protect them, cover them with your grace? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
was not lovely. All my life, we will sing of the goodness of God. Our final psalm is Psalm 63, a modern version. Like a thirsty child reaching for a drink, I grasp for you, O God, and I have found you. I have sensed your holy presence in the worship service, in the hour of prayer. I have felt you to be near. I realize now that your love for me is far better than life itself. My heart is full of joy and contentment. Wow, my mouth is filled with praises for you. And even the night hours are no longer lonely as I contemplate your tender concern for me. The enemies of my soul still seek to betray me, but they shall not snatch me out of your hand. And now that I have found you, I shall be secure and happy forever. These are the inspired words from a loving God. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Amen. And now our next video that Spirit has chosen for us. What does God see? Well, let's play the video for you. What does God see?
for words. What does God see? But what do you see? Well, we come to our Lenten reflection from the Book of Lent with a reflection from St. Francis of Assisi. And his theme for this reflection reads, true concern for the poor. And again, he quotes his favorite gospel, the gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verse five. Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Judah's question in today's gospel can generate nearly endless debate about the role of almsgiving and charity in the Christian life. Francis seems to have been acutely aware of the deceptions and subterfuges of some who wanted to follow him. A story is told of several of his long sorry, of his biographers, of a man known as Brother Fly. I never heard of him. Brother Fly. After Francis had preached, a certain man came humbly asking to be admitted into the order. The saint said to him, if you wish to be, if you wish to be joined with the poor, first distribute your possessions to the poor of the world. When he heard this, the man left and impelled by a carnal love. Ooh. He distributed his goods to his relatives and gave nothing to the poor. It happened that when he came back and told the saint of his generous liberality, the father laughed at him and said, go on your way, brother fly for you have not yet left your home and your relatives. You gave your goods to your relatives and you have defrauded the poor. Wow. You are not worthy to be numbered among the holy poor. You are not worthy to be among our order. You have begun with the flesh you have laid an unsound foundation on which, to on which to build a spiritual structure. That carnal man returned to his own and got back his goods, which he did not want to give to the poor. And for that reason, he abandoned very quickly his virtuous purpose. The tensions between material possessions and the spiritual life has always been part of religious life. We see it in our own religious institutions and in many of our lives. Francis knew the many dangers of money and if we listen to his cautions and strive to live his ideals, we can rest assured that we won't go too far off the path. They are wise words, and maybe they're words for us to hear this evening. Let us now in the stillness play for you a simple prayer to thank God for everything. So let me find the video, a simple prayer, here we are. <clears throat> Within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today as I come before you, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for everything you have blessed me with. In the midst of life's challenges and triumphs, I'm reminded of your unwavering presence and boundless love. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life itself. Each breath I take is a reminder of your grace and mercy. Thank you for the beauty that surrounds me, the warmth of the sun, the whisper of the wind, and the melodies of nature that sing your praises. I am grateful for the love of family and friends 
for the support and encouragement they provide along life's journey. Thank you for the moments of joy and laughter shared with loved ones and for the strength you give me during times of sorrow and struggle. Lord, I thank you for the opportunities you place before me each day. Opportunities to grow, to learn, and to make a positive difference in the world around me. Help me to seize these opportunities with gratitude and humility, using them to spread your light and love to others. Forgive me, Lord, for the times when I have taken your blessings for granted or failed to recognize your presence in my life. Open my eyes and my heart to see your hand at work in all things and grant me the wisdom to always walk in your ways. In your name, I offer this prayer of thanksgiving, knowing that all good things come from you. May my life be a reflection of your love and grace, now and always. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. A loving prayer. A prayer of gratitude. Well, this leads us to the Canticle of Mary, known as the Magnificat. And there are many versions of the Magnificat in English, in French, almost in every language. But this is the version the Lord has chosen for us. is his name. I'm inviting your heart in this Holy Week to switch off the mind, to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you now, because we come to a guided meditation led by the Holy Spirit. I've no control over what I share with you. I'm trusting like you to hear what is Christ trying to tell me in this Holy Week? I'm aware of what happened 2,000 years ago, but am I aware of what the Lord is asking of me 
right now. No, I'm not, but I'm willing to listen because like you, I'm still a student, still learning the monastic life. So let us come into the presence of Jesus who is still in the desert, knowing that in a few days time he will be betrayed and he will be mocked and scourged and crucified. So sit with Jesus, let him take your hand and touch you and fill you with his love. Oh, good boy, good boy. Mm -hmm. As you gaze at Jesus, you're aware that in the morning meditation, you noticed a gentle tear flowing down his sacred face. And you wipe that tear because that tear became your tear for the children of God who tell their friends they love God, but they choose to sit in judgment on the children of God who dare to be different to them. You're aware of the grip of Jesus' hand. It is tensed. You're aware of his struggle, of what awaits him. And yet he looks at you with such love, with a gentle smile, He is so grateful that you haven't abandoned him, that you are willing to walk with him in this incarnation, in this godless generation, where so many have walked away from the God who was crucified for them. Jesus takes you in his arms and you're aware of the sweat flowing from his body. You're aware of his heart racing and beating fast. You're aware that there's some form of internal pain, struggle. Maybe he's trying to comprehend how will he handle being mocked by Pilate being betrayed by Judas and sweating blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. But you who are in his arms, you bring great comfort to the Lord because he knows that you will never run away because he anointed you as his father's prayer partner on earth. That's why you're here, to hold in prayer 
the children of God that Jesus still loves, who no longer buy into his teaching or wish to be a people of prayer. They have chosen a different path, but Christ is following them because he will never give up on them. In the arms of Jesus, you become aware of a special blessing. And the blessing is the word from his Father for you, that in your volunteering to be a prayer partner with Jesus, the Father reminds you that you are royalty in his kingdom and that a special place has been reserved for you because of your love of Christ. Relax now and in the gentle arms of Jesus be reawakened to who you really are, a child of God, a co-creator of God, bringing good news to those who need to see and feel and share in the smile of God. Relax now. Be still now. We now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mike is off, brother. Ah, uh, so sorry, Iris. Old age comes at a price. Let's start again for you. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to us gathered here, dear Lord, our daily bread. Forgive us our misdemeanors, our selfishness, our stubbornness. Forgive us for the times we've walked away from you, for the times we failed to listen to you. Forgive us for failing in thought, word or deed, for being uncharitable, for sitting in judgment on our brothers and sisters. But Lord, lead us not astray but protect us from the enemy of our soul, the Antichrist. And lead us to you, Lord, because yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the short prayer from St. Francis is as follows to conclude our Lenten observance. And here we are. All praise be yours, my Lord, through Sister Water, so useful, lowly, precious, and pure. Amen. And now, as we bring our evening prayer to a close, I choose to share my heart with you and to blow the light of Christ that is so special to me as it is to you. Focus on the flame and visualize the divine mercy, arrows of divine love flowing from the heart of Jesus into your heart. And be aware of the gentle touch of Jesus as he places the healing hands of his Father, the healing love of God 
through his hands now being placed over your heart. Breathe in the breath of God and now allow yourself go free from this table of God and let the light of Christ shine through the smile of God that you will share with those who are in need. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve a loving God. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum. May the peace, the love, and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, be with you right now and remain with you always. Amen. So we go from this table of love. We don't leave it disheartened. We leave it renewed in our mind, in our body, and in our soul. Because in a few days' time, we too will be resurrected in our spirit with the risen Christ. Our final video was chosen by the Spirit for you, and it's called Near to You, O Lord of Hosts. Help me draw near to you. What a lovely gift. So let me now locate the video, which is here. Here we are. And I will say thank you for letting me pray with you. Near to you, O Lord of hosts, help me draw near to you. Teach me, O Lord, how to worship you in truth and spirit. Give me wisdom to know the truth. Even this my age mates, they ridicule my faith. For how long will I be far from you? Don't forget me in your mercy, O Lord, for my own is with heaven, and heaven is my eternal dwelling place. And now I can see Brother Ollie, and he's looking through the window. Isn't he, isn't he a darling? Sorry, folks, on YouTube and Facebook. I just love this beautiful little puppy. He really is a gift from the Lord. So let me now play this for you. Just bear with me a second. Let me just find this video. Okay, it's not there, but I'm going to play this tune for you. Oh, Ollie, you look gorgeous. I'm going to play this beautiful song called Jesus We Enthrone You by Don Mion. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are king.
And now I say good night and God bless. And thank you. Thank you, dear friends, on YouTube, on Facebook, and our brothers and sisters have just left on our Whereby channel. But I wish you'd come over to the Whereby link and see the beautiful videos that the Spirit has chosen for you. Because it must be awkward as you miss out. You hear the voice, but you don't see the beautiful creation in the video. But I leave it to you. Be led by your heart. Thank you for letting me pray with you. Remember, you're in my prayers too. God bless you.